Okay, so let's have a look at some of the other options within the queue menu. So making sure that my orthographic is on here, I'm going to click on the X to go in the X axis and middle mouse just to move my grid line a little bit further down in the UI. So E, select the curves, Q, and I'm going to select the spline tool here and just plot some points to make a new curve. Escape. So with our curve active here, I'm going to hit Q and we're going to focus on these tools here in this video. Let's start off with this one, the move tool. Now we looked at this briefly in the previous video, but let's look at it in a little bit more depth. So select the move tool and you can see that the move tool brings up a widget. The move widget for the curve is different than those in our menu on the left hand side here when we were creating our polygons. This widget tool is specific to the curves generated. We can do exactly the same operations with this widget. So for example, I can take this and rotate the curve. I can move the curve in any given direction. So we can see here that our Y axis is green and our Z axis is blue. And we have these colors coordinated here with those axes. So I can move these along in any particular axis whilst working in orthographic view. We have our X, Y and Z coordinates here for the widget itself. And this point here is the coordinates displayed in these three boxes here. So if I wanted to bring this widget down on the Y axis, I will click into the middle box here and say, for example, zero. And it will bring the widget down and anything that's selected with it to, in this case, the grid line. If ever the widget is displaying the wrong axis, for example, here you can see that this arrow here is pointing in the X direction and this arrow here is pointing in the Z direction and it doesn't match with our actual world coordinates down here. If that happens, simply come over to this button here to say to world space. And if we left click that button, it resets the widget only to show the correct axis in world space. So let's move our curve back up into the center of our screen and look at a few other options. Using these arrows, we can move in any direction. If we want to have more of a free form movement on this curve, then we need to click in this central ring here, and then we can move this around like so. If I want to scale, then I will use this square scaling object, which will scale this uniformly. If I want to scale in any particular axis, let's say, in the Z axis here, then I'll click on this small square here and scale in that particular axis. If I want to rotate, I can either use these small handles here. Alternatively, I can use this outer ring to rotate. So I'll hit escape to drop the move tool that we selected and click into an empty space. So now what I'll do is I'll hit Q and I'll choose the point selector here and choose a couple of points. Again, Q and hit the move tool. You can see the widget now relocated itself between the two selected points. And again, and I can do the same scaling, moving, rotating with these points selected. This time I'll just select one of these points so I'll hit my selection, click on this point, Q, move. The widget snaps exactly to that single point that's been selected. And now I can move this around. I won't be able to rotate these points because they are only a single point or scale in any direction, but I can move them specifically on an axis. So as you can see here, my widget now is slightly off. So I need to go to world space to bring it back. And now I can be a little bit more accurate in moving this point along a specific axis. And of course, I can use my free move to move this wherever I like.
So when selecting points with the curve tool, I have my point selector active. If I click and drag, it will drag out a bounding box for selection. And I'm going to select these bottom two points here on the curve. And if I wanted, I can now bring these down to my baseline simply by hitting the Q menu, move tool. And now in the Y, I can bring those points down to zero and those points will now snap to the baseline at zero. At this point, maybe I need to scale them out in like so. If I change my view now to a perspective view, rotate my camera around, let's add the axis. You can see that those two points now are placed directly on the grid at a value of zero in the Y axis. So a quick way for me to scale to a specific point here would be for me to click on the point I wanted to scale towards, Q, move, the widget snaps to that point, and then maybe if I want to bring the rest of this over, select the other points that I need to bring to that point, and then scale those to the selected point that I have the widget attached to. Alternatively, with the widget attached to that particular point, I can uniformly scale based on that selected point or rotate. So you can see that the move tool within the, within the curve tools is very powerful to allow us to manipulate and change curve elements, not only at the point level, but the whole curve itself. I'll hit my hotkey Q and the next tools that we're going to look at in this row here um, are specifically looking at the points. So we've already mentioned that we've got a linear, a spline and a B spline curve that we generate. Essentially, these three options here convert points on the curve to any one of those three types of curve. Let's have a look. So I'm going to hit Q and make sure that my curve is selected. And then I'm going to hit Q and select the direct selection. So I'm going to select this point here. And as you can see at the moment, we built a curve that was a spline curve. So I'm going to convert this point to a linear curve. So I'll hit Q and with the point selected, I will choose this option. Let's do the same over here. And the same here. So now I changed the properties of the curve from a spline curve to a linear curve. Now I could have done all of those in one go just by selecting them all and hitting the Q menu and choosing the linear curve. So let's change all these points now back to a spline by using this next option. So now we're back to where we were. We can change individually these so we can have one as a linear, one as a spline and one as a B spline. We're not limited per curve as to what the types of points can actually be on that curve. Next, let's look at the Q menu and look at these next options here. So we have two options on this row here and a third down here which essentially, which are associated with curved points. So I'm going to, again, select a point on here, and then I'm going to hit Q, and I'm going to choose this first option here. And this shows me now the handles used to control this particular curve. Now, if I toggle between the different ones, so I'll change it to the next one, and the next one, you'll see there's no difference. That is because these handles work in different ways based on the properties that we set here in these options here. So let's have a look at these. So I'm going to go back to my first one here and use this handle here to change the direction of the curve. You'll notice that the handles either side of my point are even when moved. So they move evenly both in length and direction. Let's change and use the next one here. And let's do the same thing. Now you'll notice that one side of the curve is manipulated differently than the other. The properties of that curve are changed based on the length of that angle. 
to the right of the selected point. Let's do the same on the left side. Let's change this again, Q, and now we'll choose this one. This gives me full independence on either side of the point. So now I'm able to change the direction and the length of the curve based on how I manipulate these handles. So here, for example, our curve is sweeping round and I change the direction independently of the other handle. This allows me to get sharp points followed by smooth curves. So this gives me a lot of control over the points selected on any given curve. Finally, let's look at the last few options for point editing. I've hit Q on the keyboard. Next, look at these four options here, which are associated with point editing. Let's look at the first one here. Essentially, this splits any selected point into two, meaning that at the moment I have a single curve with one point selected. With that point selected, if I press this button, now the curve is split into two separate pieces, and you can see that in the curves tree here. It selects one of those automatically afterwards. Let's use the direct selection, Q, direct selection and move this curve now that's been separated. I'm going to hit Q again on the keyboard and now I'll look at this next option, join points. And as you might have guessed, if I select these two points here, which we just split, 3D Coat will now join those two points together. Let's zoom in a little bit closer. And this is where these handles also will be important as to how 3D Coat joins these two. So let's go ahead first and join, Q, join. Now you might have thought that this join would have joined smoothly between those two points, but because of the way that the handles had been left during that previous split operation, the handles are far too long and the direction is not correct for us to join these smoothly. So 3D Coat has tried to take the path direction and length of the handle into account and then has averaged between them in order to make that connection that we specified. So let's redo this operation and see how we can correct that to make a more expected result. I'm going to undo and I'm going to hit Q and I'm going to now choose one of these options here that we previously looked at. So now I'm going to just change the direction and the length of these two points. So here, I'll choose, I'll choose one of these points here and maybe just level those two up so they're on a similar level. Now I'll reselect and let's hit Q and join. Let's deselect and now you can see that those two have joined. Of course, it really depends on how you want these to be joined. So you will have to decide when changing these handle directions how you want the new bridged curve to be represented and that is all to do with the direction and length of these handles, which is why they're extremely important when using curves. Next, you'll notice that I've now got two curves. I've got two points at either end of the curve. I hit Q and look at our next option here. This is where we can link two points together without them actually joining. So with those two selected, I'm going to use this option here. And you'll see that these two points now have been connected. However, they're not actually welded or part of the same curve because we've still got two curves. So if I select both here, you can see even though they's linked together, they didn't actually join the curve together. So here, for example, if I choose this one and I use my Q move points, you'll see that they both move together. Similarly, if I use Q and the move and the widget tool here, you'll see that they both move. If I use, if I select both of these and select my direct selection, both of these curves will move together as expected. But if I use move one curve singularly, then the other point will follow. However, only that point that's connected to the other curve. Same with this side. If I select the left side, Q, use my direct selection, and move this one, the other curve does not follow. However, that single linked point will follow 
the other curve. And we'll look at the final option on here, which is collapse two points. So I've gone ahead here and I've created these two points on the end of this curve. And I want them to collapse to more of a central point here, maybe. So I'll hit Q and select those two points. I can either shift and drag a marquee out or shift click and select them independently. And then I'll hit Q and then use this option here of collapse two points. And it collapses both those points and averages roughly in the middle of them to a single point. Now, finally, you can see these two options here on the, at the bottom of the Q menu. And we can see them here on the top menu as well. Essentially, when they are this light gray shade, this means that I'm able to manipulate the handles and position of the points, as we've already discussed. However, if I was to turn off these options here, and now you'll notice that I cannot manipulate any of the points on this curve. So sometimes if you find that you are unable to move these points, check at the top to make sure that those are active. So that concludes this video. In the next video, we'll look at some of the other tools in the Q menu. See you next time.